Hello, I'm Riata Scott, joining you once again for Part 4 of Creating a Newsletter from Scratch with InDesign CS6. In this video, we'll work with text frames. The default style for a text frame is transparent with no border, which you can see here in the table of contents that I've added. You can always apply a fill and stroke to the text frame afterward, or you can use one of the shape tools and simply add text to it. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool here and simply click and drag in this empty area to create a box. Now I could go ahead and grab my text tool here and click and just start typing, uh, but what I'm going to do is add an article that we had done in Word already. So we'll go up to File and Place and I'll find this little article about a zebra. Click Open. And since we already had this text frame or this uh, rectangle selected, then when I placed the document, it automatically placed it in, in the selection. Otherwise, it would have just been on our cursor and we could have clicked anywhere to add. Now, this is a little bit hard to read, so let's make a few changes. First of all, I'll select all of the text here and I'll open my swatches panel, make sure I'm on the fill, and I'll go up here and choose paper so it's white and I have Calibri, that's fine. I'm going to change that to 14 points. And let's make it bold. And I want to point out, you can see right away we have some overset text here. So let's change the size of our box so it can fit everything. And I just got my selection tool back and I'll just click and drag from the handles. My computer's being a little bit unresponsive at the moment. All right, that's good for now. And then we're going to change the inset spacing because I really don't like it flush against the edge. So I'm going to right click and choose text frame options. And then our inset spacing since this uh, icon here is selected, that means that it will change everything at once if I change something. So I'm going to change that to 1 pica. Oops. My computer is still being a little unresponsive for some reason. When I hit tab, the rest of them become 1 also. If I move this over and click preview, I can see how much it's spaced in. And again, I have some overset text, but I'm also going to add an image a little later in a later video, and I'll have to change that once again. So I'm just going to leave it alone for now. The last thing we'll do with this shape before we move on to our lesson about columns is add some rounded corners to this box. So I'll select the box come up here to our corner options and choose rounded and I'll click off this box so you can see it and there we have it alright the last thing we're going to do in our text frame video is change this from one column that's spanning across here to three columns so I'm going to right click yep, let's choose it first so I've got my selection tool and I've selected it and I'm going to right click choose text frame options and a uh, number of columns we'll put three and you can see it happening already over here we won't worry about the inset spacing because we already have some spacing with the gutters and since there's no background on this text box we don't have to worry about it being flush against anything so we'll just say OK and then I'm going to select everything here and what I did was even though we were on the selection tool, I clicked five times, it selected everything, and then I'll go here and choose Write Justify. And let's just click off of this so you can see what's going on. And this isn't exactly what I want yet, but we're also going to place an image uh, here in the center, which we'll do in the next video, so we will fix this a little bit when we get to that point. 
Before I end this video, I'd like to mention that IT Training offers free beginning and advanced courses in InDesign as well as other software for all students and staff. So if you're interested in learning more, log into training.missouri.edu today and register for a class.